Hey there, smart students of La Plume Process. Welcome to the first episode of Megumi's Secret Files. Together, we would explore very many less known facts about France and French. In each episode, we will dive deep into my secret files and choose a case subject. We'll study the less known facts about them and improve our knowledge. So, let's dive deep into my case files and choose our case subject for today. And our case subject for today is... Drum rolls, please! Mona Lisa! Yes! Our subject for this episode is Leonardo da Vinci's chef d'oeuvre, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa was painted by da Vinci somewhere between 1503 and 1519 in Florence. Francis I of France acquired it for 4,000 gold from maybe da Vinci himself or his legal heir Francesco Mezzi. One interesting fact about Mona Lisa is that she was not painted on a canvas like our usual paintings. Instead, she was painted on a popular plank. Whoa, that's crazy. Here's the image of the backside of the Mona Lisa painting. Also, don't get deceived by her popularity. As big as her name is, the original painting is small, measuring only 77 cm by 53 cm. It's often said that the lady in the painting is a woman called Lisa del Giocondo. The painting was supposedly commissioned by her husband. Oh, how romantic. There are countless reasons for Mona Lisa's popularity. However, what cemented her fame and globalized her name is a story of her theft. Cemented her fame, globalized her name? Fame, name, that rhymes. I could be a poet. Press the like and subscribe button if you want me to write my own poems. <laughs> the Mona Lisa was stolen by Vincenzo Perugia, who was an employee at the Louvre Museum. He worked on the glass case of the painting. One day, Vincenzo stayed behind in the Louvre and hid in a closet. He hid Mona Lisa in his clothes. And the next morning, well, he just casually walked out with it. What a bro moment. Mona Lisa instantly became the talk of the day across the globe after the theft. People even used to go to the Louvre to see the empty wall Mona Lisa was displayed on and mourned for her. And the media did not miss the opportunity to telecast and broadcast about her disappearance. It was only after two years when Vincenzo was caught. He was trying to sell it to Giovanni Poggi, a museum curator. The painting was then brought back to the Louvre. Now, let's come to the romantic part. Oh, my favorite part. Mona Lisa receives countless love letters from bewitched suitors who often bring flowers and love letters for her. The letters are so large in number that the authorities had to install a special mailbox for her at the Louvre. I hope someday someone would paint me too. I would look as elegant as Mona Lisa. Oh... Where are you, my artist in shining armor? <clears throat> uh, back to the topic. Everything is not rainbows and sunshine, though. Mona Lisa has also broken several hearts. Here's a heart-wrenching story. Luke Maspero, an aspiring artist, fell desperately in love after seeing Mona Lisa for the first time. It was a love at first sight. A coup de foudre, as we say in French. This 
love turned into an obsession, and Maspero jumped to his death from the fourth floor of a Parisian hotel in 1852. After his death, the investigators found a note left by him, which read, For years I have grappled desperately with her smile. I prefer to die. May his soul rest in peace. And now comes the biggie for the French learners. Do you know what Mona Lisa is called in French? Well, Mona Lisa is called La Joconde in French. Remember it and impress your friends with the newly gained insight. And that marks the end of the episode. I would like to thank the professors of La Plume Française for teaching me all this. Hoping to catch up with you all in the next installment of Megumi's Secret Files. Thank you for joining me. Have a nice day.